Those are the five steps. You set the goal, you take messy action and fail, you learn from your mistakes, data, not the drama, you improve the systems and you improve the actions and get better and keep going forward. Now, here's something that I want you to understand. Every time you go through this iterative process, every time you go through this iterative process, it makes you about 5% better. Hey, quick question. Have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered what it actually takes to go from quote unquote rags to riches? What would it actually take to, uh, let's say, be born in a, a small suburb or not even suburb, small, small apartment in Queens to a jazz musician uh, and have nothing, nothing to your name, nothing to your family's name and end up being one of the richest people in the world? Let's say, 18 or 19 billion dollars worth of riches. Have you ever wondered what it actually takes to, to achieve all of your financial dreams as well as all of your impact dreams? Um, well, uh, I wanna share with you uh, the, five, the simple, simple, simple five step cycle that Ray Dalio has followed to literally go from ri uh, rags to riches. If you don't know who Ray Dalio is, uh, he's one of the richest people in the world. He's, his net worth is somewhere between 18 and $19 billion. Uh, he's also one of the smartest people in the world. He's gone completely from nothing to billionaire. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's, his principles, uh, and when I say principles, I literally mean principles. His book, Principles, uh, is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. It is also dense as shit. It is filled with all sorts of stuff. Um, if you haven't read it, it's a phenomenal read, but I just wanted to share with you probably the most important piece from that book. And it's Ray Dalio's five step success cycle. Um, and if you follow this, if you follow this, you will undoubtedly have all of the achievements, all of the achievements that you've ever wanted to achieve. Now that's easier said than done because most people get in their own way when it comes to following this five step success cycle. But I wanted to share with, share it with you anyways. Okay. So Ray Dalio says that this cycle is the literal reason why uh, he's been so successful because if you follow this over time, it almost guarantees that you will get anywhere that you wanna go in life, all right? So the five steps, they're not that difficult, not that, I shouldn't say, I should say not that complicated, but they're a little bit hard for people to follow and stick with. Step one, set a goal, right? Step one, set a goal. Step two, fail at it. Step three, learn from your mistakes. Step four, improve your systems and your actions. Step five, set a new goal and take action on it again. Now, I want to dig into these, I want to dig into these different steps because I want to talk about why, I want to talk about um, what each one really means and why most of us struggle at actually following each of these steps. So step number one, um, well, we all know that like uh, most people don't even set goals, right? For whether it's for fear of failure or not understanding that uh, you know, you're like 100% more likely to achieve goals just by getting clarity on them. Clarity of your goal is one of the major things that actually allows you to achieve that goal, right? So step one, setting goal, you know, this is kind of table stakes, right? If you're, you know, if you're, uh, you know, if you're a coach, if you're into self-development, you know that this is table stakes, setting a goal, right? But I want to emphasize something a little bit more clearly on this. It's not just about setting the goal. It's focusing on the goal. This is the big problem that most people have. They can set a goal, but focusing on the goal is a totally different thing, right? Um, you know, one of, my, uh, one of my favorite learning lessons that I love to tell people, right? When I was in the corporate world, uh, when I quit corporate, it was because I realized the one resource more important than money was my time. Right. But as I became an entrepreneur and as I started to set goals and as I started to learn how, what it actually took to achieve those goals, I realized very quickly that there was actually one resource more important than my time. It was my focus, right? Because what I put my focus on is what became reality, what became real, right? So focusing on this goal, I think one of the big things that I see in the self-development space is people focus on too many things uh, at one time, right? Uh, yeah, I want to find my perfect, you know, my perfect spouse and I want to have perfect work-life balance and I want to be a millionaire and I want to go impact a million lives all at the same time, right? One of my favorite quotes from Oprah, she says, you can have it all, you just can't have it all right now. 
right? You have to focus, singularity of focus. So you got to set the goal and then you have to have singularity of focus on that goal. Step number one, right? Step number two, messy action and failure. Now we all know, you know, we're all told like, oh, success is on the other side of failure. You got to go fail to get to where you want to go. But most people don't actually seek failure. They're kind of okay with failure. Like, yeah, I know that I'm going to fail. Yet you still, you're still afraid to take action and know that you're going to fail, right? So why are you hesitant? You know, I bet right now, I bet you're right now, there's something that you're hesitating on doing in your business for fear of failure, perfection paralysis, uh, uh, over analysis, right? Uh, uh, paralysis by analysis. You're preventing yourself from moving forward because it's not perfect and it, you might not look great. You're not seeking failure. You're not fucking seeking failure. You need to understand that the faster you fail, the bigger you fail, the faster you'll actually grow. You should want to fail. You should want to mess things up. You should want people to judge you. You should want to make mistakes. You should want people to look at you and be like, what the hell is he or she doing? Because that means you're really getting out of your comfort zone. When Tony Robbins says messy action, you know what that means to me? It means you're taking action so much, you're taking so much action so fast, right? That it makes you so incredibly uncomfortable that it's messy, right? That's what messy action is. It's actually seeking failure, not just being okay with failure, but seeking failure and seeking to fail faster because you know, the faster you go through this cycle, the faster you'll get to where you want to go, right? The more iterations of this cycle that Ray Dalio talks about, the success cycle, the faster you will grow, the faster you will get to where you want to be. If you go slower, you'll get there much slower. If you go faster, you'll get there much faster. So I want to fail faster. I want to fail bigger and I want to fail harder than everybody else. So that's step two. You got to go fail. You got to take action. You got to go fail. Number three, you got to learn from your mistakes, right? There's a lot of people that'll get out there and they'll fail, but then they won't learn from their mistakes. So how do you make sure that you learn from your mistakes? right? Well, the first thing that I noticed being one of the biggest issues in the entrepreneurial space is you actually don't learn from your mistakes. You learn, you, you attempt to learn from the story you tell yourself in your head, right? You attempt to learn from the story you tell yourself in your head. Oh, this didn't work three times. So that means it's never going to work, right? Well, is that true? Or is that just a story you're making up? right? You need to have data. You need to look at the concrete data. You need to look at the objective numbers to figure out what you need to adjust, what you need to get better at, and where you need to move forward. You know, the story I always tell, right, is uh, we had a client of ours. We had a, a client of ours, uh, and she was making like $1,200 a month. She was making like $1,200 a month because she was in the health and wellness space, and every single one of her clients, she had like, uh, you know, was paying her like one or 200 bucks a month, right? Now, we taught her how to start to enroll clients at 3K and we taught her how to lead generate. So she was starting to get on more leads. Um, but what happened was she called me, she started freaking out, Xander, Xander, oh my God, like nobody can afford my new 3K prices. I'm never going to survive in business, blah, 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 blah. Right. And I go, oh my God, oh my God, what's going on? What did we do? Did we break it? Right. And she goes, she goes, yeah, nobody can afford this. And I go, okay, so how many, how many leads did you get last month? Uh, and she goes, 12. And I go, okay, so uh, how many of them can't afford it? She goes, pretty much all of them. And I go, okay, pretty much? Like how many, how many of them enrolled? And she goes, uh, four. And I go, so you had, you had four people enroll at $3,000, but because eight people couldn't afford it, you're telling yourself that this will never work. So how much money did you make last month? She goes, oh, I made 12 grand. So you made 10 times the amount of money last month but because it was scary to hear no's and hear people telling you that they couldn't afford it, you start to tell yourself a story. You start to get into your own head. It's hard to hear no's. It's hard to get rejected, right? But we all tell ourselves stories. Now, the important part is, are you making decisions based on your stories or are you making decisions based on data? She literally 10 x her business, but she started to freak out and wanted to quit because people were telling her no, even though she made 10 times the amount of business, right? So number three, you got to learn from your mis mistakes and not dwell in story, right? Number four, improving and adjusting, right? This is where you take the data to go back to the systems and the actions that you've taken before, take an objective look at the, uh, at the systems and the actions that you've taken and improve on them. Right now, here's the important part. You have to take emotion out of this. This is why Ray Dalio was so good. You cannot make these decisions. You cannot make your improvements and adjustments 
based on emotion and based on story. You have to make it objectively based on data. That's what made Ray Dalio so incredibly good because he could always make these improvements data based, right? And you want to improve your systems. You want to always be getting better. And then you want to get back into action and set a new goal based on the new information, data and objective uh, information that you have to set a new goal and get back into action. And those are the five steps. You set the goal, you take messy action and fail. You learn from your mistakes, data, not the drama. You improve the systems and you improve the actions and get better and keep going forward. Now, here's something that I want you to understand. Every time you go through this iterative process, every time you go through this iterative process, it makes you about 5% better, right? So if you only go through this iterative process once a year, you become 5% better over the course of a year. But what if you go through this process? What if you go through this process every single week? That's 52 times a year. 5% starts to compound. In fact, it starts to compound so much that it goes through the stratosphere. Even if it was just 1%, if it was just 1% better every time you go through this process and you did it for 30 weeks, right? Not even a full year, 30 weeks, you would be 37 times better. 37x better than what you are right now. Now, what happens if you continue that process for a full year? You end up over 150 times better, right? This is what happens when you understand this iterative process. The faster you can go through this cycle, the faster you can go through these iterations, the quicker you get better, the quicker you learn, the quicker you get to where you want to go. But if you're afraid to go through this cycle, if you hold yourself back from taking action, if you hold yourself back from looking at the concrete data, because sometimes the concrete data is scary to look at, right? If you hold yourself back from making adjustments, you're never going to get there. I need you all to remember that success loves speed. Success loves speed. There is no question behind that, right? If you were in an airplane and you wanted an airplane to take off, could you get that airplane to take off giving it 30% throttle? No. You got to give it 100% throttle. Success loves speed. It's the only way to get your business to take off. And yeah, and then once you get it up to cruising altitude, you can pull back on the throttle. But you will not get to where you want to go unless you put in full effort. You go fast. You get uncomfortable and you seek failure. So I want everybody to remember you didn't sign up for easy. You signed up for impact, all right?